World News Today, brought to you by Continental Radio and Television Corporation, makers of Admiral Radio, America's smart set. Adolf Hitler has made his first speech since last November, admitting that Germany is a war zone under Allied bombings. Uh, keep on the ball, fellas, right there. Keep a constant shot. Don't let those enemies sneak in on you. Remember what happens when you don't see them. Just about ready to turn over the initial point. Be ready to open the ball base, Paul. We'll be turning in about 30 seconds, Crump. Keep watching. A couple of minutes out of the target, Paul. Remember, interphone communications, fellas, for all except the navigator and the bombardier. They have to pick up that target. Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. In early 1943, American heavy bombers began flying raids all the way to Germany. Even though they were unescorted and suffered heavy losses, their sheer numbers represented a serious problem for the defenders. Various tactics and weapons were developed to counter the bombers, sometimes simply by inspired junior officers. Two such officers were Leutnants Dieter Gerhard and Heinz Knocke. They came up with an idea to try to drop bombs from their Messerschmitt fighters on tightly packed bomber formations. Bombs would have time fuses and would primarily serve to disperse the formations and enable more effective gun attacks. Gerhard was killed on 18 March 1943 attacking a B-24 formation, but his friend Knocke was determined to put the concept to the test. Four days later, Knocke's flight took off to intercept the bomber formation attacking Wilhelmshaven. Only his plane carried the bomb, and he was the last to take off after mechanics had to change a blown tire. When he climbed to 32,000 feet, his flight was already attacking the retreating bomber formation. Uh, here they come, three enemy missiles, 200 yards out, 7 o'clock upper, here they come, breaking under, 2 more, 5 o'clock upper, watch them, O'Donnell. Knocke edged slowly above the bombers, whose defensive gunners fired at him. Despite receiving several hits, Knocke persisted and eventually dropped his bomb. exploded in the center of a row of flying fortresses, tearing the wing of the B-17G named Liberty Bell. The bomber crashed into the sea. Two more bombers were shot down, but Nokia's bomb attack was an extraordinary thing. Late that night, he received a phone call from none other than Hermann Göring, who congratulated him on his initiative. The next day he was called by General Kamhuber, the commander of 12th Air Corps, who reprimanded him heavily, but after the mention of Gehring's call, he had nothing else to say.
Nor Gestapo continued with bomb attacks with mixed results through the spring and summer of 1943. On 17 April, no bombs caught a hit, but Nokia shot down one bomber near Bremen. On 14 May 1943, Nokia's Staffel intercepted a formation of B-17s after their attack on Kiel shipyards. Nokia's bomb failed to explode, but three others were effective, and three B-17s crashed as the result. Nokia then proceeded attacking with his gun. After two frontal attacks, a B-17 went down. The next day, American bomber formations repeated their attack on Kiel. Messerschmitts again dropped their bombs on them, but only one scored a hit. Knocke again managed to shoot down one of the B-17s with his gun. Knocke shot down another bomber by gunfire on 11 June, but on 25 June he was wounded and had to take some time off. The German tactics of bombing the bombers would reach its peak on 28 July 1943. 11 BF 109s took off, climbed above the bombers in the Helgoland area, and dropped their bombs. Unteroffizier Fest dropped a bomb which exploded in the middle of a tightly packed group of B 17s. Three of them went down together. On the wings of this success, German pilots continued with gun attacks. They claimed 11 bombers all together, while one of their own was shot down. Knocke again claimed one bomber. Despite this success, the bomb dropping tactics were soon abandoned. Partly because German fighters started to carry rockets, a weapon which could more easily be aimed at bomber formations. And partly because once Americans were able to provide fighter escort to their bombers all the way to Germany, bomb carrying fighters would have been easy prey. Knocke survived the war and he was eventually credited with 33 confirmed victories, 19 of them were heavy bombers. He wrote a well known autobiography called I Flew for the Fuhrer. If you liked the video, be sure to press the like button. Support the channel on Patreon if you want to see more videos, join our Discord server and keep watching Showtime 112.